Today I'm sharing what's in my hospital bag as a second time mom, so let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel. I am very close to being due with baby boy number two. I am about 37 weeks pregnant and I just finished packing our hospital bag. Should have had this in like a week ago, but that's okay. So today I wanted to sit down and share with you all the things that I'm bringing to the hospital. And I like to see this more from like a second time mom view because you've been there, you've done that. So I know that last time I shared a video of what I brought to the hospital with me for my first son. I will go ahead and leave a link to that video up above if you want to check it out, but I really, really overpacked. So this time taking just the, the bare necessities, the little bit of essentials and not bringing as many things. So here are all the things that we actually will need in the hospital for this time around. My first son Peter was born in May 2020, which crazy times. And then the second baby is due June 2022. So just about two years apart. Um, so without further ado, also I will go ahead and do my best to leave links to things that I can find in the description box below. So you can check them out there if you want to see any of these specific things if I happen to have the links for them. Okay, without further ado, here's what we're packing for the hospital stay for myself, my husband, and baby as a second time mom. The first thing that I want to show are pillows and linens. So we're bringing our own pillows. This was really nice to have for the first time around, but I just have like two old pillows that were in our closet with old pillowcases on them that I don't care about if they get all gross and dirty, but also pillowcases that aren't white so they don't mix in with the hospital pillows. But it is very nice to have your own pillow at the hospital. We did this with my first son, Peter, but because it was May 2020, <laughs> When you stepped into a hospital in May 2020, it felt like I was just being contaminated with everything. And I honestly think that we took those pillows and pillowcases and we threw them away immediately when we got home because of like the contamination part that, you know, we had in our heads of pandemic at that point. So this time around, um, planning to bring them home, we'll wash the um, covers and everything, pillowcases, but it will be nice to have our own pillows, one for my husband, Jacob, and then one for myself as well. And then there's the hospital pillows, but they're just not as comfy. So bringing our own pillows. And then we are also bringing a sleeping bag for my husband, Jacob. We brought this sleeping bag last time as well because it was seemed nicer to have that instead of just like the hospital sheets that they provide, which they, they do provide them and he'll sleep on the little like couch bed thing. And you're not there for your like comfort luxury stay, but it's just a little bit nicer to have a sleeping bag and have all of your like linens together and be a bit warmer. So that is why we are bringing the sleeping bag for him. Um, that was definitely something that we did right, I feel like the first time. The other thing that I'm bringing is a nursing pillow. This is the Snuggle Me nursing pillow. I haven't used this one yet, um, but I'm excited to try it out for the second baby. And I didn't bring a nursing pillow with me to the hospital the first time because again, I was concerned about germs and wanted to take like as few things as possible there um, in regards to like linens and stuff. But once I was like in the hospital, I wish I would have had some sort of pillow. They like have all the, you know, hospital pillows and they try to like prop you up and like help you with feeding, but it just would have been nice to have a nursing pillow there from the beginning. So I'm just going to bring this and I can also remove the cover to wash it when I get home. But um, yeah, that's something different that I'm planning to bring. Okay, now let's move into the actual bag so you can see what I packed in this this little bag here. The first thing I will note that kind of goes along with the breastfeeding pillow is I'm bringing my pump and you don't need to bring your pump to the hospital. When I gave birth to my son, Peter, we had a lot of troubles with breastfeeding and latching. He couldn't latch at all. So I ended up having to pump, but they like brought in the hospital pump and we'd like feed him colostrum on a spoon through the pump. Anyway, it was this whole thing. So they have pumps available if you need it, but this is a new pump for me. I have the LV Stride. With my first, I use the Spectra S1, which I really like, but I also, um, I got another free pump through my insurance. And so I picked out the LV Stride this time because it's hands-free and thought that that would be a little more convenient if I needed to be with having a toddler and a newborn or just a toddler and a baby. So I'm excited to try this one out, but 
all that to be said, the reason why I'm bringing it is because I hope to see a lactation consultant in the hospital and then they can help me to like make sure that I have it all on right, make sure that I have the right size for the flange and the whole like settings and everything. So I just mostly want to bring it so that lactation can make sure that I have it all set up correctly to use to its like best ability. I'll let you guys know what I think of the LV versus the Spectra, but the Spectra was awesome and I also saw lactation after I gave birth and I brought in my Spectra and they helped me get that set up. So it would just be nice to do that from the start here. And I'm not sure if lactation consultants like this one or not. We'll see what they have to think about that. But thought that I'd bring it just because. I do still need to sterilize it. So it's still in the box. That's like last thing on my list right now is like to get bottles and things sterilized and planning to breastfeed and planning to nurse. But again, with the experience we had with our son, Peter, we had to pump and bottle feed for quite some time with him at the beginning. I want to be prepared to like do that again and have it not be like frantic. So I want to have everything washed and ready to go. Okay, other fun things in the hospital bag. Should we start with the toiletries? Let's do toiletries. Okay, here I have my little toiletry bag. Same one as I packed last time. I put a little pen in there just because you fill out a lot of forms. I'm sure they have pens at the hospital, but just we have that there. Jacob and I are each bringing a sleep mask because um, the hospital can be very bright and also noisy. We're also bringing earplugs as well. So we're not planning to obviously like be all zoned out like when the baby's there, but I'm planning to get an epidural. And last time around when I got my epidural, I was unable to like take naps during the day and everything like waiting for delivery. So if we can rest, we will. So we have sleep masks. Next we have is a bag of little shower toiletries. I have here some um, makeup remover wipes, which are important. I remember when I was in labor last time, my makeup was just like sweating off my face. And so it's definitely good to have some makeup remover wipes so that I didn't look like a raccoon, like for some pictures when we had delivery. But then I also just have shampoo and conditioner in here as well. Pretty simple stuff um, for that like one shower that I'll take at the hospital. And then I have some body wash as well. We also are pack I'm packing a hairbrush, a travel hairbrush, and some lotion, as well as some deodorant. And then we have electric toothbrushes, but we're just packing some regular toothbrushes to take with us to the hospital, so they're packed away. And I have a little travel toothpaste as well, and some little flossers just in case, you never know. Okay, other things that I have here, Hair ties, super important to always have hair ties. I had my hair up the entire time I was in labor. Definitely a necessity. And chapstick, also a necessity because you'll get all, the lips get all dried out and everything. So that's basically what's in the little toiletries bag here. Just some basic essentials for when you're staying at somewhere that's not your home. Some other things that we are bringing are related to snacks, which are important to have as well. We're just bringing like a box of Cliff Bars as just so like if you're starving and you need something, like here you go. And then I'm also bringing some Dum Dums because I remember when I was in labor, my mouth got so dry and I'll have to check and make sure that like I can have these while I like have an epidural and I'm in labor and everything. But to like have some sort of hard candy to suck on would have been really nice. And even like after delivery. I remember I like lost my voice basically. I don't know. It was just like my throat and my mouth just got so dry. So having that hard candy I think will be helpful as well as packing some gum. Another thing I'm bringing that I didn't bring the first time around is a sound machine. So the hospital gets pretty noisy and having a new baby there it would be nice to start on a sound machine so i have the hatch travel sound machine so it's extra small we have hatch sound machines for everyone in the house but we just have this little one for travel and i'm just planning to bring this for the hospital i'm also bringing a bluetooth speaker which is something i didn't do the first time but if we could like listen to music or like whatever then we have this little speaker it doesn't take up much room and we'll bring that with us have that all charged and connected to our phones and then we have other important um, technology things as well. Two 10 foot cables. I know this looks ridiculous, but it's so nice to have the 10 foot cable because you don't know how close you're going to be to a wall outlet. So it's nice to have a huge cable for you to charge your phone with. We definitely bring in those. And Jacob also packed our, um, what is this called? Like our other charger, portable charger or whatever that you then just plug in to your phone. So he has this ready to go as well. I'm also bringing a water bottle. Yes, they have like 
water cups at the hospital. But I remember this being helpful, like having the straw situation that then like clipped back in when I was in labor so I could kind of like lay down in bed and, and drink it and everything. So that was helpful. And then I'm also bringing some slippers. I don't think I ever wore slippers the first time around. And we'll talk more about that when I show clothing and things I'm bringing. But um, yeah, I'm planning to just bring a little pair of slippers there. Okay, let's take a look at clothing. So for my husband, I won't show my husband's things, but he just packed a couple outfits, underwear, gym shorts or whatever, and socks. And then for myself, I am bringing, first off, a mask. So man, it's crazy to me that I've only given birth during the pandemic and I was so close with my, <laughs> with my first son, but um, I had him in May, 2020. And I remember at that time, I didn't actually have to wear a mask in the hospital. When I got to the hospital, they tested me for COVID, was negative. And so I didn't have to wear a mask at all the whole time, which was so nice. This time around, masks are required. So I'm gonna have to wear a mask the entire time, which I'm not very thrilled about. And I feel like all hospitals are doing this differently now, like across the country. I don't know. I don't want to like make a big deal out of it because we've been wearing masks now for two years. But if you've been vaccinated and you test negative and you're not showing any symptoms, I don't understand why I have to wear a mask, but I'm gonna follow the rules that I need to and we'll see how long I can keep the mask on for. But when you're in like labor and delivery, it just sucks. And also the mask just makes me like more anxious. And even like we've recently uh, went on a, on a trip in March and flew to Arizona. And for me to be like pregnant and chasing my toddler around the airport and wearing a mask and trying to get them on it was just like so overwhelming and I just get very flustered when I'm like wearing a mask so honestly not thrilled about this but I'm gonna like suck it up put on my big girl pants and like make it happen but just not super happy about that other things that I'm bringing are just a shirt just like a loose shirt this isn't a maternity one but just a loose um, shirt for me to wear on my way home. And then I also am bringing a bathrobe. I didn't bring a bathrobe with me the first time, but it might be nice to just have a little robe um, after shower and things like that. When I gave birth, it was just all so crazy given the times, given like some issues that we had when our son was born with like his um, feeding and his stomach and everything. And so I was just so overwhelmed that I never ever got myself dressed. Like the whole two days that we were there, like after delivery, I had like healthy, like vaginal birth, but I was just like so overwhelmed with all of it that I literally just stayed in the hospital gown the whole time, which you can totally do. And it was comfy and it, it worked, it was fine. But I totally thought that I'd, you know, get dressed and do all this stuff, but we couldn't have visitors. So no one, no one was coming to see us. And so I just like lived in the hospital gown. But this time around, I'm like, okay, well, I'll pack my robe so that I can put this on fresh, like after the shower, that'll be nice. And obviously I need to bring an outfit to wear home with me. So I'm packing the shirt, like I said, I also have, on on my list some comfy pants to pack with us like right before we go and I'll, I'll talk about that too of like my go list um, of the last minute items but um, I'll have that as my little going home outfit which is just gonna be for comfort not for fashion okay other things that I'm bringing clothing wise have a nursing bra here um, I love these ones this is the Auden brand from Target and they just have the snaps here so I have one of these that I'm planning to bring um, this is actually an older one that I've had for a bit since I've basically been living in nursing bras because of feeding my last son and now being pregnant and everything. So I just kind of live in them, but I bought new ones. And so I'm bringing like the old one with me to the hospital. And then when I have the baby, then I'll just have like fresh new ones at home and that'll be really comfy. Okay, the other thing that I'm bringing with me are a set of pajamas, which I basically just plan to live in at the hospital. So I, I mean, I'm not gonna like get dressed and see people. So I'm, bringing these little pajama shorts. I have this little set from Target. I'll see if I, yeah, I can link this because I just bought a new one of these. Um, I've had this one for like two years now. So again, it's kind of getting a little like dingy, but um, it's perfect because it has buttons in the front. So then I can use it for nursing pretty easily. So planning to bring this, this is the old set. And then I recently just bought a new set. So I have that at home here that I wear, but I love these pajamas. They're so soft and cozy. And then they also have the buttons in the front. So really nursing friendly. So definitely planning planning to bring those. And that's probably what I'll live in if I'm not in the hospital gown at the hospital. I guess I didn't share, vi I know I talked about we're not having visitors, but our hospital also now is allowing two people to be with you for labor delivery postpartum. When I had my son, Peter, it was just one. And that was honestly a miracle. I was grateful that my husband could even be there. Um, my husband will be there. And then my plan is that my mom can be the other person who can 
like be there for delivery and then could like drop by for like postpartum, like maybe bring us a meal or I, I don't know, whatever, see the baby. It, ideally, my plan is to have another vaginal birth and hopefully we can be out of there in like a day or two. So I don't need visitors to be there anyway, but we can't because of COVID. So it'll just be my mom coming like in and out of the hospital a couple times. You could have two visitors, but they have to be the same two people the whole time. So Jacob and my mom will be those people. Okay, next we have some socks. I just have some cozy socks here. And then shower shoes. Always pack yourself a pair of shower shoes. And I had Jacob pack some shower shoes as well because hospital floors are dirty and gross. And I mean, I mean, I guess they're clean, but I just would rather not walk around barefoot on the hospital floor. So here is the bag that I have packed for all of baby's things. Just a little diaper bag here. Um, we way overpacked for Peter the first time around. So tried to limit it <laughs> again for this baby. Okay, the first couple things that I have in here are a couple swaddle blankets. This is just to take cute pictures with him at the hospital. So those will be like his little announcement photos with these blankets. And then in the same regard, I have this little plate, which I'm not gonna show, but it has his name on it on the other side. So we will use that in the photo as well. We also are bringing some swaddles. They have swaddle blankets at the hospital, but which are, which are fine and that's what we use with Peter, but it's hard to like get them all swaddled up. So we figured that we might as well just bring our own little zipper swaddle that we have. I only wanted to bring one, but Jacob was like, no, we should bring two because what if he spits up on it, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, fine, we'll bring two. So we have one zipper swaddle blanket and then we have the Ollie swaddle. That's this one, which is like all Velcro. So these were the same ones that we had for our first son. Um, and we're just bringing these again to have for baby. And then the other things we're bringing for him, little mittens. I was not prepared for how long Peter's fingernails would be in the hospital and how he'd always still be like, and how he'd already be trying to scratch his face. So I have little mittens here and then a little hat for him. Cute, cute. Also, by the way, since this is my second boy, all of these clothes are his brothers <laughs> and I'm just reusing, but that's, that's okay. It makes it a little more convenient having, having two boys, same clothes. And then I have a couple little outfits for him. So I have, what do I have here? I have a newborn sleeper. This will probably be, I don't know, what he goes home in. And then I have a couple newborn onesies. It's just a spare outfit. And then I have a zero to three month onesie just in case he's big. Peter was seven pounds, two ounces. And I'm expecting that the second baby might, will be a little bit bigger. I think that tends to be what happens with second babies. But um, Peter was just fine in newborn for a while. So I don't expect that the new baby will have to wear this on the way home from the hospital, but better to be safe and have something in the next size up. So zero to three and then a couple other things that are in newborn, which she's most likely to wear. And that is everything that's in this bag because the hospital will give you diapers and wipes and everything to use like when you're in the hospital. So definitely had no need to pack any of that. So what I've done to stay organized for this hospital bag packing process is I just made an, a note in my phone and I have shared this with Jacob, which is so nice. So I've just been crossing off or like tap, you know, using like the checklist feature to like check off the things that um, we have in the bag already. And then there are some things that are more like last minute, like go grab it as you're going out the door things because we're still using it now. We can't pack it. So at the very beginning of the note, I then have like a, like another list of the last minute things that need to be packed. So earplugs, we actually somehow don't have like an extra set of earplugs. So we have those already at our bedside. So we'll just have to pack those. So we actually just ordered some more on Amazon. So I should have those done soon. And then the pants that I'm planning to wear, which I honestly probably just wear to the hospital. I'll wear them home from the hospital. So I have those. I also want to pack a um, soft nursing bra, but I also like to wear those when I'm just like around the house. So I need to pack that. Um, the pump, like I said, I still need to wash that, sanitize, and then pack that in the bag. I'm also planning to bring some makeup, um, just a little bit so that for pictures or something, I can add a little bit of makeup there. And then we're also planning to bring the camera. So those are all of our like last minute things. I also have a list on here for our first son, Peter, because he's gonna go stay with grandma and grandpa during the time that we're in the hospital. So I have a little bag packed for him as well, but a lot of his stuff is also last minute. So I also shared this note with grandma so that she knows what he will need as well while we are at the hospital. So I have that all saved on this note and it's nice to be able to reference this and um, cross things off once they get in the 
bag. But I think that we're officially done with the hospital bag. I think we're ready to go. And I'm glad to like check this thing off the list because I feel like baby boy's gonna be here soon. I don't know. And um, yeah, I had to get this, get this done. So let me know in the comments below what you are planning to bring with you to the hospital or if you've already delivered, like what was super helpful for you to bring to the hospital, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can stay tuned on upcoming baby related videos and things. We're finishing getting ready for this baby boy and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. About to leave.